Afternoon, Gary. Hi. Um, we'll start with recent form. Four wins in, in eight, 15th in the Premier League, 30 points on the board. Not bad for a side that everyone predicted to go straight back down to the Championship. Um, yeah, yeah. No, we've had a we've had a decent little run, I think. Um, yeah, but we haven't we haven't achieved anything yet. I mean, still, uh, there's probably still a few people that think we could still go down to the championship. So there's still an awful lot of work to be done from this moment. We have eight very big games starting with with the one tomorrow um, against a, another very good side. So yeah, I mean, the, the points tally over the last eight has has been decent, especially considering the teams that we had to play in there, Brighton, Arsenal, Man City, so some tough Liverpool, some real tough fixtures in there. Um, so to, to put the points on the board that we have has been good, um, but still an awful lot of work that needs to be done from, from this point on. What have you done in the last phase of games? Because you went for a long spell after the World Cup where you weren't winning games, you weren't scoring goals, you weren't keeping clean sheets, but clearly something has changed. What have you done to to turn things around? No, yeah, we've we've kept working. We've we haven't really changed too much, as in the way we work or the way we play. We haven't changed anything actually. We've just managed to improve it, and we've had a lot of players come back from injury, and we we've signed a few, so the group is stronger. There's a little bit more competition for places. Um, but yeah, we have more depth. So in that spell after the World Cup, we were we were short. Um, and yeah, we're, we're we're not so short at the moment. So. Um, We've been very competitive in, in most of our last last few matches and you know, we'll be looking to do the same again tomorrow. How do you see the relegation battle? Because every week that passes, the dynamic of it seems to shift between the teams that are fighting in amongst it, the teams that pull themselves out of it and, and clearly obviously being one of those sides very much in the, the battle. How does it feel for you? Um, yeah, I don't don't pay too much attention to the, the sort of movement in, in places between teams because... Yeah, one goal here or there can change an awful lot at the moment. Um, so yeah, we have a real focus on ourselves. Um, as we've seen over the last few weeks, if we take care of our own business, then the rest of it shouldn't really matter to us too much. So a real focus on making sure we take care of our bit. Um, and then, yeah, um, there's nine teams involved still probably. Crystal Palace have had two good results, so maybe they start to, to take themselves out of that now. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be working very hard over the next six, seven weeks to to get ourselves out of it as quickly as we can. You've had a little bit of praise, actually, from Stephen Warnock, uh, who was speaking on the football show on Sky Sports, uh, and he said Gary O'Neill has come in uh, and he makes huge, huge decisions within games. I think he's done unbelievable. Um, you're not in the same bracket as Jose Mourinho, but how many times have we lauded Jose for making big decisions during matches? When people talk about you as a manager, not your team, about the decisions you make tactically during matches, how nice is it to perhaps see that the work you do and the decisions you make is being noticed by people that analyse and watch a lot of football? Yeah, I, know, I mean, yeah, I'm very aware that all of my decisions are being noticed. I'm sure everybody's looking at all of them. Um, yeah, you get some right, you get some wrong. They, in from where I am, they're always for the right reason, and there's always a, an awful lot of work that goes into into them and why. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, I mean, there are big decisions to make every day at this football club, at every football club when you're in charge. So yeah, you try and get them as many right as you can. Um, <clears throat> sometimes some are proven right because of results, and yeah. So the substitution the other day, I guess we changed Tav comes on and we score a goal like people everyone thinks that's a good substitution Tav, Tav wasn't really involved in the goal we could have scored the goal if Tav wasn't on there's a, there's a lot of ifs and buts attached to it so a lot of it's sort of circumstantial but um, yeah everybody my team my staff the players everyone's giving absolutely everything we're working our socks off and um, so yeah I think the group at the moment deserves the praise that it gets um, but very conscious that We've achieved nothing at this moment. For 30 points won't be enough to keep us up. So, yeah, we need to keep pushing. Up next, Tottenham, a team that on paper could be immensely challenging. Recent form would suggest that they're having a little bit of a wobble. Clearly, everyone will look back at the beginning of the season where Bournemouth were 2-0 up and unfortunately lost 3-2. How do you see the dynamic of this game? Yeah, I think it'll be tough. I think um, home form is excellent. I think they've won five of the last six. Um, they've beaten every team they've played at home in the bottom half. I don't think they've, and fairly comfortably as well from what I've seen. So they're a very good side against the, the teams lower down the division in, in home games. Um, so yeah, they have some fantastic players. They're 
they've been well coached for a very long time. They know their system and they haven't changed um, at all since since Antonio left. So, yeah, it'll be a tough test for us, tough place to go. Team that's trying to qualify for the Champions League. So, yeah, it'll be a very tough test. And just finally for me, bit of tip, bit of team news. Obviously, I know there's been a lot of injuries recently. You're getting players back. Can you just give us an update on who's available and, and where you're at with players for this weekend? Yeah, um, Marcos Sanessi has done a little bit of work this week, so hope to have him back in the match day squad. Um, Junior Traore will miss out again. Um, yeah, he won't make this one. Uh, who else is there from the last one? I think everyone, everyone that was available for the last game is available. Um, so yeah, we're in a we're in a pretty good place, um, and pleased to have Marcos back in and around it. Thanks, Gary. Gary, 30 points from 30 games. Um, you mentioned that won't keep you up, but if you carry on at a point a game, you get 38 points. Is that going to be enough to keep you up? I'm not sure. Um, we'll try and get more than 38, but yeah, 38 is normally enough, but that, that doesn't mean it will be this year. It's slightly different this year with so many teams involved. So um, yeah, I think the points tally required could could be quite high this season. I, I, I don't know. Obviously, it's hard to predict. You know, It could change this weekend again. So um, yeah, we'll be... We'll be aiming to just take as many as we can, and um, yeah, for, there, I haven't really got a number in my head that I'm aiming for. So um, if 38 is enough, 38 is enough. But we'll be we'll be pushing to get as many as we can. Does being in the 30s in the points column just feel a significant step towards a target, though? Um, no, no, I don't think so. I think um, we we've added a lot recently, really. So 12 from eight games is is a decent return, especially from the run of games that we had. So that that's changed things, obviously. Um, I think we were down maybe bottom of the league for a little while there, not not long, but maybe a few days or a week. Um, and since that moment, we've managed to to fight back and push on. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I'm keen not to talk about where we are and how well things have gone for the last few weeks because it doesn't mean anything at this moment. Um, yeah, we need to make sure that we're we're well above the line come the come the 28th of May. Can you sense the impact, though, that even sometimes one result, like the result in Leicester, given the magnitude of the game, can have on the club, the players on the training ground, even people around the club as well? Yeah, it feels like that in the Premier League a lot, I think, especially when you're one of the teams that are down the bottom. Any win is huge. So it's, it's felt like that in every single one that we've managed to win since since I've taken over. I think we've, well, we've won seven games or eight games this season. Um, and everyone has felt big. Um, and I, I include the Aston Villa one on the first day of the season. It, that felt big as well because you're newly promoted and to get off to a good start. So, yeah, they, they all feel big. Um, that's why we work so hard and we put in as much as we can because we know the rewards of at the end of the week are, are huge. So, um, yeah, a lot of work again gone in this week to prepare for Tottenham, a very good side. Lads are in a really good spot, um, trained well all week. And, yeah, we go there to, to put up a really good performance. If your centre halves are all fit, and are you hoping that Marcus Tonesi will be involved? How hard is it for you to change anything defensively? Marcus Tonesi's been a regular, but Chris Meppham came in last week and helped keep a clean sheet. Uh, yeah, there's there's decisions to make, of course. Um, yeah, we have centre backs that have performed well. Mepps did do really well last weekend. Jack Stevens has been solid for us. Um, yeah, Marcos has put in some some good performances as well. So Ilya's getting fitter all the time. Um, but yeah, yeah, as as we saw earlier in the season, you you need those because it doesn't take much for for someone to get injured, pick up a knock, and then um, you're starting to work your way down through the numbers. So yeah, important that we keep all of them in a good place. As as we saw last week with with Meps, who had missed out for a couple, kept himself in real good shape, stayed sharp, um, trained really hard, and then when you come in, you're able to to put in a real good performance like he did. I know you've moved on a lot from the home game here, but when you reflect on it, and I'm sure you'll have watched it back many times, how long did the disappointment linger from that, which would have been a huge win for you as a manager, but also how much have you learned from the kind of situation you faced in that in that home game against Spurs? Yeah, I think it was a tough it was a tough loss, of course, um, especially the nature to two set play goals at the end. Um, having put in so much work um, and the, the game plan and the way the lads carried it out to get us in that position 2-0 up at home after... 60 minutes or whatever it was. Um, first goal was really soft. So, yeah, when you're two 0 up, and you know that it's it's a tricky scoreline two 0 because it that that first goal when it goes two one, you can feel there's a big shift in momentum. Um, so the nature of the first goal was, um, yeah, could have been avoided. And then, yeah, let's hope we get the chance to be two 0 up tomorrow and and see it out. 
Just finally from me, um, Jordan Zamora, obviously this week, his situation has moved on in that he's, he's obviously signed or uh, signed a pre-contract with Udinese. Can you just give us your reflections now that he's, his future is clear in terms of how that's all panned out over the last few weeks? Yeah, no, I, th I think you guys know most of it now, if not all of it. I think it's, it's all out. Um, yeah, the, the club have always been really aligned in, in how we see it. Um, yeah, and, and Jordan will move on and, and, and play for another club next season. So, yeah, as always, my focus is on the group and, and making sure that everybody's ready for the weekend. And will his situation stay the same in terms of staying here, continuing to train with the under-21s? Or now that his future's a bit clearer, is there a possible change in that scenario? Um, no, I think we're, the, the club have made a decision. As I say, we're very aligned in it. We've made a decision that it's, it's best at this moment for, for Jordan to train with the under-21s. And yeah, that will remain in, until it doesn't.